back to another episode of From the Horse's Mouth, where today I'm sitting with the one and only Hemp is the Toy from Annandale Estate. If you guys knew what the time was, you'd probably peel over backwards. But in this industry, the industry doesn't sleep. Every day is the same day, and also when it's wine time, it's wine time, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> when, once the bone has gone over, we are ready to drink. <laughs> That's it. So, so Hempies, uh, let's jump straight into it. Um, first of all, can you just maybe uh, tell me a little bit more about yourself? What got you into wine making and where you've produced wine thus far? Uh, it's quite unique because I, I, I feel I was born into wine. I didn't buy myself into wine. Yeah, yeah so for sure, for sure. I was born into wine and, and I grew with it with the, with the wine making with, from, a child, from my childhood yeah, yeah. days with my father at Alta. Yeah, yeah, for sure where I spent 22 years of my life yes, before I moved on to Annandale to fulfill my dream of my own wine, yeah. not working for other people. Yeah, that's, that's great. So on that point, you were producing wines at Alto as well, right? And how long did you do that for? Oh, I was, in, I was doing that for 25 years yes, see, before no. I moved on to, uh, to Annandale. Okay. I mean, if I say 25 years, I, I was involved with my dad since childhood days, from the age of about seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. I worked in the cellar. Yeah, yeah. And little small tasks, taking the the grape stalks into the into the crawl for the animals for for, for, for composting. Yeah, yeah. So that was my job every <laughs> afternoon after school that I loved. I mean, yeah, that's that's great. Well, I mean, obviously, then the the, the passion and the enthusiasm behind you know the wine craftsmanship obviously runs through your your veins. Yeah, it's actually, um, it runs in our veins, that's, that's why I say our, our wine, our, our blood's red. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it is a five generations history of, 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 of wine making, yeah, so yeah. it comes naturally, we don't have to think. Yeah, that's beautiful. But it also, as well, is that where you picked up the Young Winemaker of the Year Award, right? When you were producing there? No, no, I got, I never got, I never got. <laughs> Young winemaker award. Didn't you? No, but I got the uh, Grand Prix de Honneur okay. for my 1984 Cabernet Sauvignon. There we go. I knew, I knew there was an expert. Okay, for sure. Because the, funny enough, the oldest wine I've ever tasted was a wine that's, uh, that you actually let me taste. And I think it was a Pinot Noir. I don't know where the Pinot Noir was from, but it was an 87, I think it was. I don't know. Could, could you remember where that could be from? I think it was an 82. Was it 82? Oh, then it's it even was, older. I think it was 82. <laughs> no, I just had. We had we had um, Pinot Noir at Alta, and I can remember that in the '82 vintage, we the Alta Rouge yeah, had yeah. some Pinot. Oh Noir. wow, that's crazy! And thereafter, we sold it, and that grapes they use that back color for the first um, Pongrat. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. for the MCC. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I I made one barrel just for 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 the record. And that must have been just see, that was super delicious. I couldn't believe that that varietal in specific. I mean, yeah. I understand that they can age, but I didn't realize that South African Pinot Noir had the potential to age for such such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So that is that's still one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Yeah. So thank you. Memory. <laughs> so so Hempy, it's the wine that we're actually trying today is a wine of royalty. Um, this one you produced for uh, the wedding wine for Prince Albert and Charlene of Monaco. So can you just tell me how you got uh, the opportunity to produce this wine for the royal family? It was, not, it was not specially produced for the wedding, but you know, because we keep our wine in the barrel for up to eight years. Mm. And, and her father came along, Charlene's dad, and he asked me whether I could, didn't have a special wine for the, for, the, for the wedding. So I said, sure, because I had a choice. I had a choice of, of about seven vintages. Okay. Yes. And we chose the, the 2005 um, Merlot okay. for the occasion. Yeah, so the Schalbert of here was done for uh, the Prince and Princess of Monaco. It's the combination of the two names, so Albert yeah. and, and, and Shirley. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And it's a 2005 Merlot. So, I mean, everybody understands that Cab and these varietals age relatively well, but by the taste of this, the Merlot is done incredibly sure. well in bottle. Yeah, yeah, it does. No, I think we make exceptional um, Merlots in this area. Okay. I mean, you have, everybody refers to as this, the Golden Triangle. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk about the Golden Triangle. <laughs> I actually, nobody, I don't think people realize, but I, I was actually the first one who came up with a name. Really? Eh? Because somebody came, somebody asked me for, to, uh, some state agent wanted to buy some, for, or he had a, Client for this area to okay. buy some property, okay. 
So I said to him, I mean, this, this, the golden triangle, <laughs> it's the, the R44, yeah, yeah. Hildeberg, okay. and Stellenbosch Martin. This, okay. tri this triangle is the golden triangle. If you want to buy property here, you've got to put your hand deep in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how then and then and then I then I picked it up that um Stellenbosch oh, Stellenbosch yeah yeah they they registered the name oh, I, mean, I never thought of registering oh, the name yes. but I mean it's not a problem yeah well it's a everybody, thing everybody right? everybody refers to the golden yeah, triangle yeah, yeah, sure. as just yeah so so I mean uh, that specifically I mean the golden triangle is well known for its production of uh, border varietals yeah right? sure for sure. sure so that's one of the reasons why the Merlot is drinking exceptionally well today. Uh, so you actually just spoke about eight years in barrel. I mean, so that was my next point. I wanted to say that the production methods here or your production methods are quite unique to what's happening around us. And uh, as far as I know, the minimum amount of time that you kept the, the wines in barrel was up to 60 months. Has, yes. it, ch has it changed or are you still keeping it to, to that method of production? And, and, yeah, why, sure, do, sure. and why do you actually sure. produce wines like this? <laughs> I try to produce wines that people would want to drink. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And not drink just for the sake of drinking. Yeah, for sure. So we're trying to make something special. I always say that I will never say my wine is better than other people's or other producers, yeah, yeah. but it's different. Yeah, for it's sure. Different. It's a diff it's a it's a it's a totally different. You can imagine a wine in the barrel for up to eight years compared to a wine yeah. for twelve. <laughs> I mean the, the if you leave it that long in the barrel, that that wine sheds anything that it doesn't want yeah, yeah. to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, you just sure. skim the cream <laughs> from the top when you bottle it. For sure, and I, that, I remember that the one thing that you told me many years ago, you still told me that you do it like this because the wine that you get out of that at the end of the day is one of the most stable versions of that yeah, product absolutely. that you'll ever find. Because, because um, barrel maturation is a, stabili it's a, it's a stabilization process okay. on its own. Okay. So that that gives you a, a product that's I mean it shed, as I said it sheds everything yeah, yeah, that it sure. doesn't want and, for sure and oh, what you get out is out yeah control. what you get out is something like this which is literally uh, blowing my mind mm. um, so for those who didn't know Hempies uh, represented the Springboks back in the eighties and uh, you were known for being a brute force but it's a quite a charismatic uh, you know character and funny enough the ones that you're producing here. Are really a true representation of you because they're powerful, but wow, they got charisma. Yeah, they <laughs> uh, they're built for comfort, not yeah. for speed. <laughs> but uh, but Henry, so on that note, I mean, during that time, uh, or during apartheid, there were a lot of sanctions and boycotts placed against South Africa. So a lot of the winemakers were restricted on what kind of rootstocks and what they could actually get into the country. But mm. There were a few brave individuals out there that used to smuggle in uh, mm. cuttings in the Wellington booths. I wanted to know, were you one of these heroes no. or not? <laughs> no, not, no. I knew, I knew those um, responsible for that, yeah. but no. But it was all to do with the red tape that you had to go through okay, for sure. to get decent plant material. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's great that a lot of the guys did that because, I mean, where would the, the industry have been with, without these guys yeah, doing these dodgy, dodgy absolutely. things? Absolutely. And it, and it sped up the, the, the authorization of imported yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, varietals. Damn it, I was hoping that you were going to be one of those guys. But I guess, no, if you were, you wouldn't say anything. <laughs> so, um, funny enough, the fire is going here. And uh, one of the things that I actually just wanted to bring up was uh, when I was working at Takara, I used to come and work the odd weekend here and there uh, over here at Annandale. And one of the craziest things that I ever got to witness was whilst I was busy with a, a big tour group over here doing a tasting, you walked in casually, opened up the grid, threw some steak on the, <laughs> on the grid and started and shared with everybody. Yeah, yeah, and then you shared it with everybody. And that, that to me is one of the, that's as real as it can get. That's, mm. I mean, those people will never ever forget that moment when they came and they tasted these crazy wines that are coming from barrel after eight years. Mm. And then meeting the winemaker who used to be a Springbok, mm. just casually making them a bra. Mm. <laughs> I think that's what all of, all of, all of all about. You know, it's, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you enter, you're used, it's like becoming family. For sure. It's, 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 it's super it's unique. No, no air, air is nothing. It's just basics. basics yeah, yeah, for basics. sure. No, it, it really is a beautiful place, and I still love coming here, yeah. It, I always tell my children it's an understanding. It's not everybody that understands this, this ambiance. Yeah, for sure. It's something 
that you, if I, I need to pass it on to my children, they will have to, I will have to wean them into this. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. To, so that they have the same gut feel. Yeah. I always say, people often ask me, foreigners or, or visitors, they, are you the owner? You know, like, oh, are you the owner? <laughs> no, my reply is always, I'm just a custodian. Yeah, I'm a sure. privileged one sure. to be here, to run the farm and and Maintain respect, legacy, yeah. respect what nature for provides sure, sure. and the beauty of the old buildings. So that's very important. For sure. No, it's, it, it is a stunning place, making stunning ones. So, Hempis, I wanted to ask you, so with your rugby escapades, what's the craziest thing you ever had to endure or, or what's the craziest thing you witnessed whilst being on tour with either the Springboks or with Western Province or, or one of these teams? Um, <laughs> you probably witnessed a lot of crazy things, though. <laughs> yeah, I, we had some. I had some interesting, interesting experiences to, to, um, in New Zealand. Well, obviously, they don't make very good red wine. <laughs> but the interesting thing in New Zealand, the first first stop, the first game we had against Gisborne. Okay. I bought a bottle of Pinotage. Okay. What in New Zealand? In 1981. Don't that was. Weird. I actually, I actually think I still have it somewhere what? in my collection. No I way. I it. it'll be any yes. good now, but. That was a bottle of Pinot no in New Zealand in 1981. Yes. So that was that was totally totally unexpected. Yes, see, I wouldn't have expected that either. Mm. That's crazy. So um, yeah, at Annandale, there's an array of wines that you're producing. But if you had to pinpoint one to be the actual flagship of the estate, what wine would that be? It's difficult when you're producing all these amazing wines. <laughs> yeah, it's. it's I don't, I, I cannot, I, there's, there's no exception, everybody, every wine, I make sure that all the wines are up. I have a soft spot for the wine that we refer to as the key. Mm -hmm. The key has a, where, where the other labels, you know, has got the, 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 the horse okay. um, logo. Okay. This one has a, an old lock. Oh wow, okay. And, and, the, and the story about the key is, that it it, un it says that the, on the label it unlocks five year five generations of wine making experience. Yo, wow! So that wine is it's quite special. It, we only <laughs> it's a crazy, it's a crazy. <laughs> we talk about eight years, but that um, wine got lost in the mix and, and and matured for twelve years. Oh wow! The Merlot, two thousand and four. Yes, no way. You can go to Bovino today and check it. It's, I think it's four point eight. Yes, it is. Five. Wow still up to, to, to today. So that was unbelievable. It's an unbelievable one. We only did 1,500 bottles. Uh, but each and every one the, Oh, this is it, yeah. Uh, that's the one, yeah. That's, that's beautiful. I need to try and get my hands on that. So what's yeah. the price point there, just out of interest? Sake? It's not even expensive. It's a 1,000 rand a bottle. Okay, okay. Hey, it's expensive mm -hmm. to me, but, <laughs> but to but people... It's not, we only have a few left. No, no. We only have a lot of... There's of, of, of them left, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm kidding when I say that. No. Obviously, um, because you can't really put a price on a wine, no, you can't. Uh, like this. I mean, especially with the story that that, that comes with it and the craftsman, craftsmanship that that comes along with it too. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely take a look into that for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Hempis, Jan Annandale, you recently set up a farm bistro as well. Um, can you just uh, tell no, us the, what the name is and, and no, what the, the, the my children started a, 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 a business called Familiar. Okay. And they specialize exclusive um, organic um, stuff. Okay, okay. So foodstuffs, um, they've even got um, washing detergents. Oh, wow. All, all, all organic. Yes, okay. Uh, it's very much an ethical thing. I think people in charge of a setup or a shop like that, you need to trust them. You know, people come here and they sure. have to trust the, For sure. that I mean, you can, you can, they can easily side stuff yeah. it and bring in a product. People <clears throat> will never know. So sure. it's about honesty. Yeah, and I course. think they really honor that uh, what um, that commitment okay. to um, to making sure it yeah, is what it is. Sure, yeah, for sure. Make sure what it is, and it's very, uh, very <laughs> important. I mean, health, a good healthy food today is getting more and more. It's true. Um, important in, in people's lives. For sure, absolutely. I mean, that's why I say just stick to wine. The most natural form of no, it's goodness. It's a nice combination with the food. We might um, 
Well, you might, at the moment, the, the, the shop, the familiar shop is in the manor house. Okay. We're planning to, to, to bring it closer to the wine so that we can combine. For sure, integrate it. Yeah. Integrate yeah. it with the wine sales and the wine production. That's great. So if you guys are out there looking for some organic goods, you need to come on over to Familiar over here yeah. at Annandale. And also I have a, I have a, a farm in the Karoo. Okay. Where you don't, where, you know, um, pests and, and stuff so, and, and fungal thing yeah, yeah. problems. So there we, there I grow a lot of um, fruit. I mean, uh, fruit, grapes, okay. figs. Wow. Watermelon, sponge back, green beans, <laughs> spinach. So I supply quite a bit of oh, yeah, and produce sure. too, nice. too familiar. That's awesome. Mm. Mm. So then you, you're an actual farmer, not just I, a winemaker. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I have farmed with, I mean, there are very few things that I have not farmed with. I have not farmed with subtropical fruit, but I had, or citrus, but I, the rest I've done at big cuts and peaches and apples. So I'm very excited. It's a very small project, only about a, about a hectare. Yeah, yeah. And I've got different apples, pears, okay. peaches, um, cherries, um, table grapes. Wonderful, wonderful. I can't wait you know, to, <laughs> to get it into full production. Yeah, yeah. And almonds. I'll, and I'll, I'll definitely have to buy some of this fruit before I leave you because if Katja listens to this interview hearing about all this crazy fruit mm -hmm. and I go back mm -hmm. with nothing, she's going to freak you'll out. Be <laughs> you'll be in trouble. <laughs> I will help you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So, um, right now, in terms of what's being produced here, is there anything uh, else that you're looking to include into your, your range of wines? Is there something special that's in the pipelines over here? Mm, no, I don't think so. Keeping it to... I'm very to much <laughs> a old tradition. Yeah, run straight, tackle yeah. low. Yeah. I was, I, I, I grew up in the, with a mold of um, Cabernet Sauvignon, okay, Shiraz, sure, and sure. Merlot. I mean, even before, since uh, I can remember when we at Alto had Sinsa. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Sinsa is making a, I mean, it's always been around, but it's, it's, it's making a huge comeback right now. I know, I know. And it's a beautiful wine. I know, I know. People underestimate. I can remember the bush vines. When I was a child, we used to go, we used to work, pick grapes after, after school in the afternoon. And we got, we got five cents for a basket. <laughs> yes. Of grapes that you pick. Five cents. Huge. <laughs> So that was quite, those were good years. Yeah, for sure. Mm. <clears throat> so, Hembius, when it comes to, uh, I know you kind of touched on it here and there uh, during our conversation, but what's your ethos uh, when it comes to your production of uniquely crafted wines? Keep it simple. Keep it simple, for sure. So basics, basics. We don't, we just <laughs> basically take the grapes. <laughs> We, we make sure that we go, grow um, good, good quality grapes sure, sure. And, and, and do a very strict environmental friendly um, spray program. Okay, okay. And then we bring in the grapes, destalk it, put it in the fermentation tank and just leave it for nature to do its yeah, job. Yeah, that's beautiful. We just, we just chill it if we need to. But even the, the water we use, this is from a stream, okay. mountain stream. Nice. Just Pump it, take it through their jackets, cooling jackets, yeah, yeah. and then back into the yeah, street. Yeah, so we don't, we don't um, run um, anything, yeah. cooling units that's bad for sure for, sure. for the environment. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I love how you say you keep it very natural because some guys try and show, showcase their winemaking skills rather than let the fruit Absolutely. be the star of the show. You right? see, that, that what you say now is um, there are too many standing in front of the product, but other than behind yeah, it, you for must sure. stand behind your yeah. product, not in front of yeah, it, let sure. your product lead. Absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 always been my mindset too. So uh, once again, it's a massive privilege to be drinking the Shelbert with you today. Yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, uh, Hempis, if you had to give any advice to people out there who are just starting off with their, their appreciation of wine, what would it be? Mm. <clears throat> Drink? what you like. For sure. Don't let people tell you a hundred, a thousand rand bottle might not suit your palate. For sure, but, exactly. And if a, if a 50 rand bottle suits your palate, that's, that's basically where you start. For sure. And then you will develop towards some appreciating somebody else. But Absolutely. Do, do and taste what you like. Yeah. Don't yep. let people tell you what 
Don't let them force you to... Exactly. You know. and, I, and I've seen that happen. I've seen people like really struggle to drink wine and, and kind of feel obliged to have to say they enjoyed it. Mm. Um, sure. Your palate will let you know when it's time to move on to something more serious, but no, sure. drink what you like. Sure. I, I really but enjoy I mean, that. I think you must basically start with something that you like, even sure. if it's a little bit sweeter, yeah. but then gradually you will grow into more sophisticated appreciation of wine. Absolutely. I remember my grandfather used to always tell me, he was like, yeah, do you want to sip of this beer? That is all those old lion dumpies. Mm. And he used to sip it and be like, damn, how can you even drink that horrible stuff? And he's like, one day. Mm. And I mean, where do you think this comes from? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so Hempy's lastly, I wanted to ask you, do you mind if I pour a little bit more? Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not the question, but, but yeah, thank you. But I wanted to ask, just, just to um, end this uh, chat off, how do you think uh, the Shelbert's expressing itself to you after all these years? It's, un, it's actually still very, very... It expresses that, that Merlot character on the nose. It's, it, and, and yet it's, it's, it's fresh. It's, For sure. It's still fresh. For sure. Actually. I mean, it's 2005 vintage, so we talk 16 years. Yes, so that's and crazy. A lot of wines out there are dead. Yeah. <laughs> after 16 years. This is still... Uh, this is still... Uh, when you say it's, at your, it's bright on the palate, mm -hmm. eh? uh, on the nose as well, a lot of that black plum character, you know, the plummy fruit that's mm -hmm. well associated with, with Merlot really sticks its head out. Lovely ripe. Fruit. Mm, it's it's beautiful. The tannin is still there. It's still got nice acidity, mm. and the length is fantastic. I mean, length uh, like that is obviously expected with uh, this massive amount of time in oak. So, yeah, sure. uh, oh, this this particular one only spent six years in the barrel, not eight. Oh, okay, only six. But but still, <laughs> I mean that yeah, only six, only six but, years. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, but uh, but yeah, Hemp is. Uh, thanks again uh, for your time. I mean that obviously concludes this uh, interview or this conversation with you. Uh, and now, folks, you've heard it straight from the horse's mouth. So I just wanted to quickly mention that the Shelbert Tobia will be going into that mixed case of six, which you can get your hands on. All these people need to do is make a small donation towards my educational campaign and the information that they'll need, they'll be able to find uh, by scanning this QR code over here or following the link in the description. And then, uh, Hemp is like, you already know the, the funds are going towards uh, my enrollment for the WSET, the Diploma in Wines, which is their flagship. Uh, qualification so i'm looking forward to that challenge good luck so folks uh, before we leave you today i just wanted to let you all know that there's no standard when it comes to your enjoyment for wine and remember be kind and drink good wine <laughs> cheers, <Andy>. cheers. <laughs>